A.M. No, that's the wrong one. Here's an O. Oh, here's one. Um, our Weight Watchers group uh, will be meeting at 7 p.m. at the First Church of, and I'm not giving no names. It says, please use the large double doors at the side entrance. Well, I'm sure glad I don't pass through that one. Ooh, I'd have a lot of phone calls calling me, especially from that whole Weight Watchers group. Sometimes things just don't work out the way you plan. I say that because we're so grateful of how God has been good to us. And I know he's been good to you, even with some of the things that some families have had to really deal with. It's just amazing how the grace of God never fails. It never runs out. The mercies of God never run dry. And when we look back at things, I know this is a trying time, but when we look back at things, we're going to look back and we're going to realize, now what an awesome thing that God did for us. He sustained us. Look up that word. You know, every now and then when a word comes to your mind and you hear a word, look it up. Do a word search. Look for it if there's a place in the Bible that gives an understanding and maybe even a dictionary, uh, just so that you'll get uh, the profoundness of that word. We're sustained. That means that we're kept okay. That means we're stable and, and, and we're, the whole world may seem like it's falling apart, but God keeps his own together. The Bible says, in the Old Testament, it speaks of David in the book of Psalms. And he makes this statement. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor have I, I seen his seed begging for bread. So I want to tell you, I want to say as I did just last Sunday, I want to say thank you to those of you who have consistently been giving and doing all that you can. You have to learn how to use your phone. You have to learn how to start uh, doing those things like some of us that aren't really that great with them. So if you want and you're giving tonight, you can do that. You can text on your phone, area code 650, just text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, 650-985-59. That's 650-985-59. You can call the church office right now. Mona is in there. She's been helping a number of people. Sometimes three or four people will call. Sometimes 11 people will call. If you call the church office, she'll help you. There's a lot of us that are still kind of old school. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. We're going to help you. Area code 626-452-1673. If you ever have any difficulties, if you ever have any uh, questions, all you have to do is ask. And you can also go on the church app that we have on our Tithely app, and you can go by searching Praise Chapel of El Monte. You search that, it'll come up, and you can go through the steps, and you can give, and you can continue to do and be faithful to the Lord. Why? Because he's faithful to us. And honestly, he's faithful to us before we're even faithful. And that's an incredible blessing. So I'd like to, I'd like to pray because in just a few moments, I'm going to turn it over to these ladies and they're going to come up here and, and they're going to uh, share from their heart. But let me pray and then I'm going to read a scripture. Father, we thank you. We pray over the giving that people have done. They've done it prior, maybe today, or prior to this hour. And maybe those that might be doing it even after. I pray a blessing on those families. I pray a best blessing on those people, Lord. I thank you, God, that even, even while the world may not have a foundation that stands sure, we do as believers in Christ. And even when we're not totally sure how it is you're going to come through in the midst of the world going crazy over this pandemic, the truth is you always come through. So, Lord, I speak a blessing. I speak a blessing like the priest's blessing of Old Testament into each person's life who has faithfully continued to be, to be faithful to you. Lord, we ask that your blessings would go to their family and to their children and to those that are connected with. We ask you, God, for those who are 
who are holding on to their jobs, that you help them in that, that you would sustain that income. For those that have, that have probably gotten a, a, what they call a furlough now that we used to call being laid off, we ask you, God, that you would help us as the body of Christ, that they would realize that as long as they're connected to the body of Christ, somehow, some way, God will always, always be the sustainer of life. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing. I thank you for those. I thank you for those who give. I thank you for people, Lord, who have recently been supporting this ministry who haven't even stepped foot in this place. And you know what, Lord? I pray that you would bless them with the opportunity that once everything gets back together, that they would come here and we would have a great time as they introduce themselves to us. Lord, let your Holy Spirit do incredible things in their lives to help them and to encourage them. I ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, Amen. Tonight, these ladies are going to come. They're going to share what's on their heart. I want to read a scripture, if I can, out of the book of Revelations. John writes this scripture. It's a, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. But in chapter number 12 of Revelation, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It kind of stretches it out a little bit. And John says, Then I heard, then I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven saying, now has come to the salvation and the power and the kingdom, the dominion and the reign of our God, and the power and the sovereignty and the authority of his Christ, the Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren, we all know who that is, the accuser of our brethren, he who keeps bringing before our God charges against them or against us day and night has been cast out. That was a long scripture, because it's amplified. Verse 11, and they overcame, they conquered him, meaning the enemy, by the means of the blood of the Lamb, and by the utterance of their testimony. For they did not love and cling to life, even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap until they had to die for their witnessing. And he was testifying of those written in the book of Hebrews who just hung in even though their lives were taken. And some in brutal ways. Tonight these ladies are going to share because Wednesday nights have been powerful. We've just had people from within our church coming and sharing. Testifying. Testifying at a time like this when it gets a little rough and we need some good encouragement or we need to know that I'm not the only one that feels like I'm kind of, kind of going crazy. All is well. Jesus is in the boat. So we're going to have a great time tonight. And uh, they're going to they're gonna fix these ladies up real quick with this microphone. And they're going to come in this order. Uh, Sister Arlene Sandoval is going to be first. And then Sister Kitty Kingsbury, she'll come in after her. And then thirdly will be Sister Teresa Flores. Yeah, Teresa Flores, you might know her as Dominguez Flores. But this is going to be a great night. We're excited. It's going to be a, a great blessing. So get yourself ready as they begin to come. And uh, they're going to take care of this microphone for them a little bit. And we're going to have a great time. Open your ears. Turn your, uh, turn your volume up so you can hear everything.
In Romans 5.8, God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were still sinners, he died for us. And oh, how I remember my life before Christ saved me. It was reckless. It was really reckless. I have so much unforgiveness hurt that I turned it, I, not God, I turned it into rage, anger, and hatefulness, and so on and so on. But I want you all to know that if Christ can change me, he can also do the same for you. I had so much bitterness and anger because I went through a lot in my life. But when God found me, or when I found God, He just turned my life around. I would be bound to the world. I probably be in the pit of hell if I went up and surrendered. But in Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life I live now in the body I live by faith. The Son of God who lives in me And gave, gave himself for me. Wow. He gave himself yes. for us. Hallelujah. Not only for me, but for us. Because like I said, where would we all be if he would have died on that cross for us? He would have shed that blood. Or have that the nails in his hands and his feet. That spear on his side. He did that all for us. The positive impact of his reckless love for me is now that I learned that it's not about me. It's about love and God's people. Because I didn't know how to love God's people because I couldn't even love myself with so much unforgiveness that I had. The forgiveness wasn't that God didn't forgive me. God forgives us always. It's we hold on to the things that we choose not to let go. And that causes unforgiveness in our hearts. But now, he is doing a new thing. A new thing, not only in me, but a new thing in this world. He's showing me not only what he's doing now, but what he's done in my life through the Holy Spirit. I know that there are people out there right now who are watching and are so fearful of a time like this. With the COVID-19, I'm wondering if God is real and who he says who he is. But the scripture says in John 1, 4, 18, 
There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out all fear. We can be unloving towards others. But God loves us always through our good, our bad, our ugly. God doesn't hold account of anything. In First Peter 2, 6, it says, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Yes. We can disappoint him. So we think. But he's never disappointed. There's times where we can do things on character. And we feel that God's not going to forgive us. But he's a forgiving God. He forgives us always. As we tend to hold on to the unforgiveness. But when he showed me how to forgive, I forgave. I forgave everything. I can stand here today and praise him with all my heart. There's people out there probably watching and remembering who I was in the world. But that's not me no more. God's doing a new thing in me. <laughs> And I, I just thank the Lord for everything he's doing. Not even only in my life, but in my children's life, my husband's life, my grandkids' life. And just our lives in general as a church. So when you feel that you're not forgiven, just remember this. God doesn't hold account of any wrongs. Amen? Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome, sister. Um, I just want to thank God for being here. Um, thank um, Pastor Phil for allowing me to be over his pulpit. And I want to talk a little bit tonight about faith. Um, I know, you know, it's hard, you know, right now with all that's going on. And um, that's all we can hold on to is God. Yeah. Right. And I know that um, these are times where our faith will be tested. And remaining in your faith may seem difficult at times. But if we ask Jesus for strength, However, he 
he will help us through our, self, through our situations. We need to do like the apostles and others did and ask God to increase our faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, we live by faith and not by sight. That's right. That's right. In 1 Corinthians 2, 5, it says our faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We need to have, have faith and strength because, like I said, without that, Without faith in our life, then we won't have too much. Matthew 17, 20 says, and remember our faith can move mountains. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things, Therefore, if you have faith, you hope for things which are not seen, which are true. Remember, Jesus is still on the throne. That's right. Amen. He is still the lover of our souls. Jesus still has the final say. There hasn't been one one time that I could say that in all this um, COVID-19 that's been going on that I've had any fear, not at all. Not even with all the craziness that's going on in the stores or whatever's not there or, you know, I, I really haven't, I haven't, I've just been like, I laugh, honestly. I really laugh at people that are hoarding and, and, and I, it, to me, it's just funny because it's like, you know, do you guys not know God will provide, you know, everything we need in food? It's, it's just crazy. It's, it's like, even if you, I see, I see Mexican ladies going in the store with little, by little teeny portions of meat. And I'm thinking they may do with that little piece of meat with all, for all their family. And I think, you know, I could be like that. But I don't. I go off my food. <laughs> I, I, I really don't cook a lot. But, but um, it's just like, where's your faith, people? Where's your faith? You know, trust in God. And he will provide for you to have your food, your toilet paper, whatever else you need. You know, it's, it's I, I, like I said, I never feared or doubted that I wasn't, that I was going to be without anything. The Bible says in Psalms 46.10, to be still and know that I am God. We need to call on Jesus so much with all that's going on. Ask him to touch our hearts, to give us the love, the peace, and the joy that yes. we need. Yes. Um, I want to read a poem. I want, I, want, yeah, I want to read one poem to, to the church. It says, when my hope fades and my dreams die, and I find no answer by asking why, I just keep on trusting and hang on to my faith because God is just, he never makes mistakes. Should the storms come and, and trials I must face when I find no solution, I rest in God's grace. When life seems unfair and more than I can take, I look up to the Father. He never makes mistakes. God sees our struggles and every bend in the road, but no mistakes are ever made. Because he weighs every load. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we need to call on Jesus so much more. We need to pray and ask him 
to just be there when we need him because he's all we can we can lean on. One last thing I want to say is we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. yes. Brothers, sisters, the church, we will rise and we need to talk. We, we need to take one day at a time because that's all we have is to take one day at a time and to trust in God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for, for all his blessings, for keeping me in the palm of his precious hand. I just yes. praise God for that. Yes. My title tonight is, Let Your Faith Be Bigger Than Your Fear. I've been nervous all day. Jazzy asked me earlier, <laughs> what's your title? And I forgot my title. But I've been constantly telling my title all week because, to me, I need to remind myself that I have to make my faith bigger than my fear. I have to make sure that my fear is minimized and my faith is big. Um, when Alfonso and I first moved into our new home, um, the first thing we did was purchase a plaque. And we put it right in front of where you walk in the door, you see this plaque. And yes, that's where I got the title. It's let, let your faith be bigger than your fear. You know, so when you walk in my door, that's what you're going to see because that's we want to be a house of faith. We want God to be there all the time. We want, we want our faith to grow. You know, the devil, he's, he's a tricky devil. You know, he's, if he sees a, weak, a weakness, if he sees a dent in your armor, he's going to pick at it. And he's going to use a hammer. He's going to use whatever he can to torment us. And one of the biggest things that he uses is fear. One of the biggest weapons the devil uses against us is, is our own fear. He figures if I can only make them fearful, if I can only make them doubt that God's with them, if I can only make them turn from God, he wins the game. Nothing can come out of being, by allowing fear to dictate our lives. You know, fear only brings anxiety, stress, and worry. You know, it can make us sick. I know it makes me sick. I mean, I've been losing hair all week. I've been super nervous about coming up here and sharing. Um, I'm supposed to go, don't tell me why you're nervous. <laughs> I go, well, I am. <laughs> but you know, the anxiety that can grip you, the stress, you know, that doesn't allow you to, to do anything because you're just stressed out. You're, 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 you're wondering, okay, am I doing something wrong? Am I doing, what am I doing wrong? Or, you know, the worrying, you know, I'm a worrier. I worry, you know, and it makes me sick. But you know, we have a good God. We have a God who loves us, a God who's always with us, a God who's in our sight. Because he loves us so much, he gives us hope. He brings hope into our life. In his promises, we can find that he is always reassuring us. That he is always telling us he is with us. We read scripture after scripture about how God is with us. Isaiah 41.10 tells us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. You know, fear is a liar. It's a liar. It's, it's, it's not your friend. The devil is not your friend. Again, he's going to use whatever, whatever tool he has. Whatever weakness you have, I am constantly having to remind myself that my faith is bigger. I am constantly having to remember, hey, you know what? God is with me. That God will see me through any issues, problems, trials, tribulations, sicknesses, whatever 
I'm going through, God's going to see me through it. Even though I put myself in that situation, that's the kind of God I have. Fear can paralyze us and cause us to panic. He can take, take what's happening here in the world right now with this monster of a virus. You know, this really hit home. Um, on Easter Sunday, you know, I also received news that his, that his pastor, for when he got saved, passed away due to this, to this monster. You know, a few days later, I found out that, that my niece had it, and she had to quarantine herself from, from everyone, and she had to isolate herself. And my thing was, I couldn't be with her. I couldn't hold her hand while she was going through this. It caused me a lot of fear. It caused me a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. And I was fearful. I was fearful because that's my baby. And I needed to be around her, and I couldn't. Come to find out that her daughter, who lives at my mom's house, tested positive also for this virus. So here comes the fear again. I'm telling you, the devil knows where to get you. She tested positive, so I fear for my mom. You know, I have an elderly mom. She, she's in her 80s, you know. And I worry. I worry about her. Being in that same house with my niece, knowing that my niece had this, this, um, this virus in her. Thank God. Thank God she didn't get sick or anything like that. I praise God for that. that she, um, she's not tested positive, but she had to isolate herself to a corner of the living room. <laughs> But I thank God. I thank God because you know what? God has his hand. I'm telling you, God has our back, no matter what. I have always been the warrior in my family. I, I, I'm a warrior by nature. I worry about everything. I get stressed out about everything. Even that stuff that's not under control, I have, I have to check myself. I have to pray that early feeling out of me more times than I, than I can count. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Do not be anxious about anything. It's in God's hands. We just got to remember that. Do not be anxious. Fear is an ugly feeling that will take away your joy and your peace. In Timothy, it tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I know I need a sound mind. You know, sometimes I, I, I allow my mind to get out of whack. Sometimes my mind goes somewhere where it's not supposed to go, and I have to remember, wait a minute, come back, you know? I was reading, I was reading a, a devotion, and I took part of this devotion. It's, it's really super long, but I did take a part that I thought was worth mentioning. It goes, let's face it, life is scary. We watch the news like, like Chicken Little. The sky is always seems to be falling. We lose sleep over our loved ones, our lost ones, and our little, and our little ones. We worry about the economy, finances, employment. We shake and shudder when more medical testing is required or the diagnosis is not favorable. We are anxious with what ifs and whys. But God reminds us. He reminds us in Proverbs 133, whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. And that's the kind of God we serve. No matter what, he's always with us. He tells us time and time again, he's always with us. I said we need to trust God. God is bigger than our fear. Trust him that he will see us through whatever situation we put ourselves in or whatever trials come upon us. In Psalms 50, 56, 3, when I was afraid, I put my trust in you. Put your trust in him. If there's anyone you can trust, it's God. That's right. You know, if anyone in, is in your corner, God's in your corner. Remember the fear is opposite of faith. 
and the choice, and we have a choice. We, we really are given a choice. What are we going to do? Are we going to allow fear to, to ruin our lives and to keep us in? Keep us in limbo of God's blessings, or we're going to have faith. You know, I choose faith. Sometimes it's not easy to be faith, to have faith. Sometimes, you know, those waves come and they knock you over. The trick is getting up. The trick is getting up and, and continue to move forward. Getting up and continue to, to just thank God and praise Him. Even through those times when you feel like there's, there's nothing there. You know, the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. And he has nothing on God. In Hebrews 11, 6, it tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. Seek God. You know, he understands. Where I can't understand what's going on, God understands. Where I fail in, in, in being that person that you need and at that point in your time, God is it. God is always going to be what you need, no matter, no matter what. Billy Graham puts it like this. Fear can paralyze us and keep us from believing God and stepping out in faith. The devil loves it. Fear fearful Christian. The devil loves a fearful Christian. I'm just like, trip out on that. <laughs> the devil wants to play games, but you know what? The battle's won. We just have to accept it. <laughs> you know, God has already given us the best gift and, to, and the best weapon to fight against all this, and that's his son. Mm. You know, all that is under the blood. I'm not saying, oh, you can't fear. Because you know what? We're, we're humans. And we will fear. 